Okay, for the next part, we're going to start adding accessories to the train. What we're going to do here is put a master cylinder with steam. What it's going to do is there's going to be a plug here inside this cylinder that's going to simulate smoke coming out with the piston with the piston action. So what we're going to do is put a flashing LED on the inside, mount it with the plug, and have that mounted in there. We'll paint it black and it'll make it look like there's steam coming out of it. The cylinder for the piston is spray painted black and then the LED is inserted inside. It has a piece of foam to hold it in place and it was also lined with uh, aluminum foil. And so this is what it looks like now. And then what I'll do here is put the piece of cotton inside there to make it look like your so steam. Here's an example out. with a piece of cotton stuck in it. Let's just do a simulated steam. And with the flashing light, it's going to simulate the cylinder pushing the push rod, making the locomotive go. Another modification that needs to be done the back edge of this is exposed. We need to have a flat edge for the other car, other robots to detect the rear end of the vehicle so that they can stop and, or pause or barely or touch it to, to stop. So we're going to create a shield to go in the back here. What we're going to end up doing is mounting it up to the back and adding lights and a bumper to it. Or the shield on the back, the backstop. The other thing I'd like to add to it is a bit of a, a light, if you want to call it that, like with our logo, club logo on it, so that we can show off our design a little bit. But right, this is top of a coconut oil jar, mayonnaise jar, or anything else would do the trick. And just used a little paint thinner and wiped off all the date codes and the stamping. And then I printed it out on paper and I'm going to put it on the back. And I will backlight it. And I'm going to paint this shield black and then leave a place for the light to come through so that we can put it like a lighted bumper on the rear. It would be pretty cool. Okay, just for a quick update on the Parade Princess. Some aesthetics have been added. Some copper wire have been added to it to make it uh, look more railroadish. Uh, also to have added the pistons with some cotton to them to uh, simulate steam coming out and uh, had some battery issues. I want to make sure it, you guys uh, I had used some uh, rechargeable batteries and found out half of them were not good so uh, as we move forward with it uh, had some experimenting to do with that. So for fun right now I'm just going to turn it on so we can see what it looks like so far. Turn the sound system on. So it starts with a startup sequence slowly building up uh, momentum. I'm going to turn it down for a little bit now. I will be adding some more things to it. I'm going to start up. It's going to have a steady state flat trap and stuff going on. Now, I put my hand in front. Sounds the alarm. Everything's working okay so far for the demo. I've added a feature to it, ground out one of the pins, all it does is play all the soundtracks that are in it. So we don't have to sit there and go through all the sequencing because it takes forever, it probably takes a half hour to play all the the tunes, it's got 20 sound files in it. 
depending on how you go through it. The software is working pretty good now. We've got the battery problem solved. We're going to go move on to another part of it, which is even cooler, before we start assembling the whole thing. Okay, one of the next features is going to be part of the Parade Princess. This is a Fish Eye Lens video camera, which we're going to mount onto the Parade Princess so that we can capture videos. And just to show you what the setup is, purchase this USB device that goes to the computer called an Easy Capture for Video. Right now it's connected straight through using video plugs right to the camera. The camera also came with a pre-cut uh, connector so that I could stick it and plug it into the power supply real quick. So right now I have to install the software and do a lot of work to it, but I wanted to, to show the the video capture software is actually uh, once it got installed it was working pretty easy and here's the camera in my other hand and what I'm going to do is bring it up you can see me uh, bring it up in front of the, the thing so this thing can capture it the one thing that I have to keep going back and do is remember the setup right here is to make sure that it tells it to go look for the camera on the RCA color jacks rather than the super video and then get all the, the setups working with this easy capture and you can see that it's actually capturing some nice pictures with the fit I says this is I got a fisheye lens in it so this is really a pretty cool thing so I draw back on it so uh, so into this computer everything's working pretty well and uh, we'll go forward from there and keep adding it and installing it uh, into the next step While the train is still running, trying trying out the audio plus burning it in, in the meantime, I've set up the mini camera right here looking at the train. This is the very first time I've attempted it. Here's the video transmitter off of here. And these work off of 12 volts. What I've done is use the battery from my hand powered drill. The 12 volt battery is pretty powerful. Attached in a couple of terminals off of there to power the assembly. Let's see. see the antenna? You see how it's the LEDs lit? And that little thing right there is the Fish Islands camera with a microphone right there. And it's aimed at the front. And let's see if we can see what it sees. Over here, we have hooked up to the computer. First off, we have the receiver, and then we have the Easy Cap converter to capture the video. And this transmitter is a 5 volt uh, powered device. And the way I have wired it is I have wired it from a cell phone power supply that I've used for some other projects, tapped it into that connector. And so we look at the software. And amazingly enough, there we go. The next step in the construction was to take all the audiovisual components and mount them into a cab type enclosure, which is made out of plastic and spray painted black. In here is mounted my drill battery, the supply to 12 volts for the uh, transmission system for the camera, the receiver, and the camera. The camera is mounted on a tilt pan, little plastic holder mount it has two servos on it those are connected to the RC control 
those have all been mounted on top of the cab and in the battery pack of 6 volts for the receiver section. I'm going to give a demo for this real quick, which is really pretty cool. I've turned on the remote transmitter and I can use it by this joystick and the other joystick to move it around. Once I've tested this, I'll retest the transmitter circuit again by plugging it into the battery and recording a new video with that and making sure it's all working before I mount it into the top section of the cab part of the train. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do a last look of the Parade Princess before her maiden journey, just to do a tour. There we go from the rear. You can see that we've got the light assembly on the back for the collision avoidance. We have the sound amplifier and the sound controller. We have the camera cab portion with a flickering LED to resemble torches. We've got the pistons with the flashing lights. We've got the smoke coming out of the smokestack. We have the avoidance system from the ping and the alarm light to let everybody know. I have the sound turned off right now. And then as we pull around and take a look at from the other side, you can see we've got a nice setup here steam and the flags and everything is a go. Antennas. So the next time we see the parade princess she'll be actually steaming in the parade. Thanks for watching.